Okay. Oh yeah. Time for the sunnies, baby. That's right. <laughs> Bloom and grow YouTube show. Hey plant friends, we have such an exciting YouTube video today. It's actually a three media cross collaboration with Bloom Daddy who has his own YouTube channel. We had an epic episode today on how to root a wet stick leafless node chonk, whatever you might want to call it, um, paired with this video, which is two parts. It's a tutorial that Peyton from Bloom Daddy gives us of actually how to pot up a wet stick um, and grow it. And then it's the part two where Peyton actually walks me through bumping my wet stick that has rooted and has first signs of growth into a larger pot um, and with some soil. So we're like taking you through the whole journey. So it's kind of a two part episode. You're gonna see my journey first and then stay tuned because Peyton is joining us for the second half of the episode where he's gonna give a full tutorial. And at the end of Peyton's episode, we announced that we're doing an insane giveaway on Instagram three philodendron pink princess wet sticks. So after you watch this video, you can enter that giveaway and maybe get a wet stick that you could try this method at home. So watch the entire thing. We've got timestamps below and enjoy. I hope that this fun um, process that I was totally, I had no idea this was even a thing, um, but I hope this thing helps you all keep booing and keep growing. Can't believe I have my own Albo Monstera node, Monstera Albo node. My friend Joey from Joey De La Plants on Instagram sent me one as a gift. He's such a good plant friend. Also, for people who want to trade plants, he always has plants that he wants to trade, so slide into his DMs. So I wanted to, I'm going to film this video over the course of several months, but I wanted to show the unboxing for how Joey shipped the plant for people who are ever interested in doing wet stick cuttings like this is. This is my first time just getting a node, and then I'm going to show you the first steps of potting it up. So... He sent it express overnight. Um, it's mid, it's early March, so he put a heat pack in it, which I thought was super smart. And here we go. Oh, interesting, okay. So he sent it in sphagnum moss. It is a little dry, but it has a nice little bud node. So I'm going to show you the nice juicy node. It looks like it's intact. It's calloused on each side which is good. And from what I've read, um, this is what, this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay. So in the way that I've prepared this is I have a Starbucks container, uh, upcycling hashtag of wet sphagnum moss. It's damp. It's not wet. You don't want it to be too wet or it, it's going to rot the node. So it's damp. Um, and it's filled with my Starbucks container. Should we name the plant after whatever the drink was? <laughs> the Starbucks person got his name wrong. Um, this was Billy's and they say they, the name on the, on the cup is Willie. <laughs> That's not my fiance's name. Okay. Node, you are named Willie. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So um, apparently you want to lay it horizontal in the middle of the sphags so that the roots can grow and the shoot can shoot. So there's two aerial nodes and then there seems to be a little dormant bud here. So I'm going to lay it on this fog this way. And apparently you just nestle it in the sphagnum and you put a top on it to raise humidity, which I have in this and then you stick it under light um, and it over several months it will grow a shoot and it will grow roots. I've reserved some primo grow shelf location, a primo grow shelf location for this puppy. So we'll see. I've never done this before. I frankly, I'm in disbelief that this method works, but I've watched a million YouTube videos <laughs> saying that it does. So I will keep you guys posted and I look forward to giving you an update soon. Time for the sunnies, baby. That's right. <laughs> the, yeah. the classic Bloom Daddy sunnies. How many, how many pairs of those do you have? I have six different colors. I each color, you know, it's just a different vibe, a different mood. And, you know, I tend to put on the blue ones when I propagate, you know, I, don't love know why. I just love the vibe it gives me, you know, it's just, <laughs> I get in the zone, I get laser focused on the, the microscopic little, you know, essence of the node. And I just, you know, take it on. Are we ready? I, I love it. 
Well, I'm so excited to have you as a special guest on this on this YouTube show episode all about propagating. So I am halfway through my node propagating journey. You're going to walk me through potting my node that's got all sorts of roots in it, all sorts of roots going on up to the next step. But for those who might want to start with their beginning step, what do we need to know? How do we take one of these little wet sticks that we see and pot them up? Well, you caught me at a good time because that is what I do most of the time, right when I get a new import batch in. And just recently I got a nice batch of imports, not so nice, not so nice plants um, that arrived pretty damaged. And uh, I have one right here. It is a philodendron Florida ghost and it arrived like this. Now, what we're looking at here, folks, is a pretty dead Mm. specimen that has some parts still alive to it um the roots all dead all mush yeah right up here the top all mush so what we do have is about one to three nodes right here in the middle that we're working with that we are going to make plants out of so that's what i'm going to do show us bloom daddy (laughs) let's do it so so here's what i'm going to do i look at the plant you know, I kind of go like this, take a really good look at it. And I'm looking for the the buds. So here's here's what we see here. This right here is the leaf scar right there. Mm-hmm. That's where the leaf used to be. And right above that or opposite of that is where the auxiliary bud is. And that is where the new growth will occur. So okay. let, me, let me take a look here real quick. Looks like it is opposite. So Right on the opposite of that leaf scar, voila, that right there, Uh huh. that is the auxiliary bud and it's green, it's happy, and it has some pretty good aerial roots. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut back all the dead stuff and then we're going to work with what we got here. So let me do that. Here are my handy dandy propagators, my nice purple propagators. I'm going to cut back some of the aerial roots that have just dried and are dead. Then you hold it up to the camera so we can see you cutting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So here's like one really good aerial root that died back a little bit. So I'm going to cut it back about halfway. Okay. Um, With aerial roots, it's okay to cut them. Um, It's, they're not really like active roots. They're Mm -hmm. kind of like a bud where they're mostly dormant. Their aerial roots are kind of searching for something to grab onto and grow in. So it's okay to cut aerial roots anywhere. There's no right place to cut an aerial root. It has an opportunity to branch at any point in its root. So I just cut mine like about halfway. Some people cut theirs even further back. Some people leave the whole thing. It's a personal preference. So that's what I'm going to do now that I cut back the aerial roots and the area around the node is kind of cleaned up. I'm going to cut back this top part, which is completely died off. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to cut somewhere in this inner node space. Here we got one node and then we got a second node right down here, which I'm going to try to save as well. So So you're going to make two separate wet stick chunks node cuttings that you're going to try and create two new plants with. That's right. That's okay. right. And, and now it is time again for the glass. glasses. We're nice <laughs> in here real quick. Here we go. Made a little bit of a mess, but you know, that's part of the fun. It is part of the fun. So here we go. All right. How do you, so how do you, can you see this? All right. Let's yes, see. we can see it. Perfect. So the yellow part dead. What you'll actually see in this yellow part is a really sad auxiliary yeah, bed. Yeah, a dead little node. It did go. So we're going to say adios. Chop right there. Okay. You don't see any special angle or anything like that because with with um, the philodendrons and monsteras, no roots and no nothing is going to grow from the cutting. See, with vegetables and fruit trees, roots can actually grow from, you know, that slice right there. Mm-hmm. So it's good to uh, increase the the area, the surface area on the cut at a 45 degree angle. Since I'm not cutting to increase surface area, a nice, you know, straight perpendicular cut on the stem is good enough. So that's what we did there. And now I've got a really long inner node. 
Uh, long internodes make it really easy to kind of pick a place to cut. So I'm just going to cut past the aerial root right here. Plop. And boom! We boom. got our first wet stick. This Yay! Is right here. <laughs> Before we move on to the next step, I'm going to make one more wet stick cut here. Looks like this is still salvageable. So although the stump right here where the original plant grew from, look at this. This is a great example. This right here is a node. This right here is a node yeah. that someone from another country, one of my suppliers, grew an entire plant from. Wow. So they got the node. It grew two roots. Um, it had two aerial roots right here, as you could see. Mm -hmm. Those right there were aerial roots. And then it shot out some nice, nice branching. Root. Yeah. Really nice branching. And then it shot out this bud right here, which then gave me all these nodes. Sadly, this whole thing died. But hey, we're going to save that node too. We're making so, lemonade. We're making lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> that's right. So here we go. I'm going to separate this root. Um, the, you want to keep the aerial roots that are directly below the node and the butt if you can. It looks like these ones also died, but I'm going to cut and all right, cut that right there. These ones are also dead. So I'm going to cut these aerial roots back all the way. And now we have another wood stick. This one. Yay. This one with no roots and just a no, uh, just an auxiliary bud. This one with one aerial root and one auxiliary bud. So now that we have our two wet sticks, are you ready for the next step? Yes, please. All right. So this oh, involves sphagnum moss, right? That's that's right. We're gonna talk all about sphagnum moss right here. So I'm okay. gonna put everything aside so we can literally just talk about the moss because the moss is the most important part to keep your wet stick happy. You don't want it too moist, don't want it too dry. So here we go. I have my moss, right? Let's get a, oh, okay. Let's try to get a close up of this moss right here. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks like this, nice, healthy, hydrated moss. This is nice, healthy, hydrated moss and it has some moisture in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze it and you guys are gonna watch when I squeeze this moss, how much moisture comes out of it? You see all that moisture? Yeah. That means that this moss was pretty wet. So what I just did was I took a lot of the wetness out. I'm gonna try to take as much as I can actually. Okay. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing, keep squeezing. Get out your <laughs> Hulk, inner Hulk strength. Really give it a good squeeze. And now I have a puddle of wetness right here on my table, which is okay because I got my handy dandy paper towel. Wipe that away. And now what we're dealing with here is rehydrated moss. And I really highly encourage we stick with the rehydrated moss because it has moisture. Although you can't squeeze any moisture out of it, it still has moisture in this moss. A lot of moisture too. So now not only does it have moisture, but it has some nice air pockets for those future roots to really enjoy because roots like oxygen and that air, as we know. <coughs> so that's what we're doing. So now that we have hydrated moss, moss that we so we squeezed all the wetness out of, we're then gonna put this in. I love using these clear little uh, drip trays actually. Uh, okay. You buy these at your local whole nursery or whatever. Home Depot even has them. I like these because they're really clear, really easy. And I take my rehydrated moss and then I just kind of, let me, let me angle it down here. Does that thing have a hole in the bottom or it's no hole? No holes. No, hole. no, okay. no entry or exit out of this dome we're about to create. It's going to be a, it's going to be a prison. It's going to be a little <laughs> uh, hotel room for our, okay. uh, for an our incubator. Nodes. Yeah. An incubator. Yeah. So, so no holes. Um, I'm just softly placing some moss down in this. And I'm going to put a little bit more in right on top, right there. Nice little cozy bed for our node here. And now that we have a nice little bed, I'm going to take out some debris in the moss, different types of moss, everybody. Um, so now that we have a nice little bed here for our moss, about, I'd say, an inch thick, maybe like three quarters of an inch thick, doesn't need to be too much. I'm going to take the one with the aerial root, node okay. number one. 
and I'm going to find the bud right there, the auxiliary bud. Got to make sure that's facing upwards. And this is great. With Florida Ghost, what's really great is that the aerial root is on one side facing downward. The bud is on the top. So it's really easy. We're just going to mm. put the we're just going to put the wet stick right on top of the moss. The aerial root will go down mm -hmm. and the bud will stay above and you want that bud facing upward or okay. else, you know, it's just a little bit harder. So that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. Aerial root right there. Face that down. Gently kind of put it in its place. You don't want to like, just like toss it on. You kind of want to give it some structure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of like make the aerial root kind of go a little bit deeper into the moss. So it's kind of like inside the moss and then just kind of press it on top of the bed of the moss. And then now that kind of like, it's just sitting there. I really don't want it to dehydrate. I don't want to have a dehydrated wet stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the bottom part a little bit right here, the bottom part of the inner node with some moss, just so that as it, as it um, continues to grow, normally with um, cuttings, they absorb water through the bottom cut. So if you have that covered in moisture, it helps it stay hydrated. Interesting. I didn't know that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that. We're going to put some moss little bit of it over the bottom right there and now it's kind of angled upward a little bit pressing down firmly on that guy and boom there we go there we go that is wet stick number one but we ain't done yet <laughs> well so we're not done yet. So then are you going to put that in your prop box or are you going to just cover that? I'm just going to cover it. So it looks like um, what I do with these no most of the time is I have these little prop bins about this size right here that I will put them in and then okay. I'll cover the prop in with a, a lid. Um, Perfect. So, so I'll put them in one of these. So if you have like a size, I get these at Target, like a 16 quart bin. That's the uh -huh. best because it's high humidity in there. Um, nice. But and you have that bin top completely closed. Yeah, bin okay, completely sweet. closed with the occasional burp every now and then. Okay, sweet. Okay, so now it's my turn. So I've done what you've done. It's been three long months, four long months, and I've got this node that has a really nice long root and the shoot shooting up it's time it's graduation day for this guy so yeah, now we're at the point where we want to give it a little nutrients we want to like start getting it kind of adjusted to real life and not just like incubation station moment so we're gonna pop this up in your like special kind of potting up mode so my first question for you is these roots have some damp sphagnum moss on them should i leave the moss or should I like pick all the moss off? So great question. It's been in the moss and it's been pretty moist. So you're okay leaving a little bit. What I would normally do is I would try to pick off as most as I can because you don't want, the moss gets a lot wetter than the soil and it could potentially lead to rot. So try to pick off as much moss as you can, at least for the bottom couple inches. Okay. So we've gone into detail of what I'm about to do on the podcast episode that's linked below. But Peyton, while I pick some more moss off, why don't you walk us through the ratio and situation that I'm about to pop this up in? So yeah, what we talked about Maria's doing right now is we're doing a 50-50. We're going to have 50% of the root in soil, and we're going to have the other 50% in sphagnum moss. And what this will do is help mimic that beautiful sphagnum moss kind of bedding for the node, but also give it that nice nutrients rich layer down below where the roots can then expand and grow a nice system. Eventually what you can do is take off that moss bed and then fill it back in with soil unless the roots grow in. Then you can pick off what you know Maria is doing right now and put more soil in. So this is a really great transition mix I use for a lot of propagation this next step so that 
it gets the best of both worlds. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm doing well. Sometimes I feel like I can't tell what's sphagnum moss and what's a, a branching root. So I think I'm going to pretty much leave it for now. Yeah, that's so, tricky. It's tough. So this is a very long root. So I'm going to pot it up in this big of a pot. Is that a good move? Perfect. Perfect. And then my thought is I'm going to pot it up in this, put it in this, and then put this on top and tape it. Yes. And then... Yes. I'm going to let the, the leaf grow. And then I've got this top that has a hole. So then I'll move it to this once the leaves start growing. Right? Love that. That's perfect. Giving it that extra space to grow into. Okay. So um, here's my question. This root is as deep as this pot. So should I put half of the root in soil and half of the root in sphag? Or should I like circle the root only in sphag do you know what i mean yeah i know exactly what you mean what i would do is i would put a little bit of the root in the soil already so okay don't don't circle it all in the moss the first option put a little bit in the soil that'll be good for this one okay so i've got um okay so lately i've been doing a mixture of i do espoma potting mix and then i mix a little orchid bark in it is that good for this Espoma. Oh, nice. The orchid bark is really good for the aeration. So yeah, that, that sounds good to me. I okay. used, uh, I, I added uh, then in a little bit of perlite as well, but it looks like that has perlite in it already. Yeah. I like the orchid mix cause it has, I'm lazy and the orchid mix <laughs> already has all the aeration stuff. That's great. That's um, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect mix. I, I usually then uh, throw in some like worm castings, but it, it, that probably has nutrients in it too if it's a pre-made mix. Yeah, it's got like by it's got like mycorrhizae and stuff in it. Oh, cool. Okay. So let me just mix this up really quick. I love this on on the spot mixing. On the spot mixing. So um, the thought is the bottom half, and then I'm gonna put the damp sphag on top. Um, and then still sit the node on top of the sphag. I'm not burying the node in the sphag. That's correct. Just okay. putting the node right on top because as of right now with your node, that's the only thing photosynthesizing and giving and charging your battery. That right there, that green part, as you see guys, that green chunk, that green node is the only green to it. Look at those roots. Yeah, that Here's bud is still white it looks like it's getting a little bit green now it's turning starting to turn green yeah. but it's still really white and not photosynthesizing so it's important that stays on top so this okay so here's the node yeah here's the shoot the roots are coming out of like this kind of dormant root yeah Should i bury this all in sphagnum because this is where the roots are coming okay so this is actually a great question so you see right there how the the node is on one side and then the the arrow root is on the other yes what happened when you were what you should have done is you should have had it grow like you should have turned it and uh, turn it and, yeah like that oh oh uh a little bit backwards um make it so the butt is facing up like that that is kind of so instead of growing like this uh -huh. what i would have recommended is for you to have boom like that that's how I would have originally started your node. But since, since it already has turned sideways, I would keep it like that because that's how it, that's how it's been growing. So you can cover that aerial root with moss and maybe keep I'll, that area protected. Maybe I'll give it a little diagonal like that. I like that. And then this will kind of counter correct. So I should have I like done that. it like this. Okay. Yeah. It would have been a lot easier for your node to grow that way. Cause as you see, it's done a lot of turning to get, get to the top, you know, it's a okay. lot of energy. Hard work. Hard work. Sorry. I made you. Oh, you're hard. good. Learning it. it. The plant's working for you, you know. It's doing yeah. it. Okay, so let me make sure my B-roll is over here. Okay. So I'm going to plant this at a little bit of a diagonal. Like that. First, I'm gonna fill it with soil. And then I'm doing 50 soil. And then I'm gonna do 50 sphag. And then do I water this like I water a normal pot? So right now, after you put the mix in, what you, what I normally do is I water. 
I give it some good water. I give it some, I give it some energy. I give it some water. And then I just toss in the moss right on top. Like you do like that right there. And there's two different ways you can water. You can bottom water or you could, you could just take off the moss and give it some water on the top layer. Oh, because I don't want to just water right through the moss. Cause that would make it too wet. It would make the moss pretty wet. So it's good not to water directly through the moss. Bottom watering is the best way to do this method. Okay. Um, and then misting the moss on top. Okay. Okay, I think I'm doing really good, but I'm gonna bring this up to the camera and show you. Sweet. I love it. So I've got that aerial node is fully buried on a little bit of a diagonal, and then I've got this guy still above. Perfect. That's beautiful. That is that is perfect right there. Do I cover this little booty with some moss as well? Well, you could, um, since your node has an aerial root that's well established with the root system, it okay. won't, it, the node itself is uh -huh. so calloused over. It's okay. so old that it won't be absorbing any water like a nice fresh cutting wood. So I'm going to bottom water this off camera and then I'm going to assemble my little humidity dome like this. Perfect. And I think I'm just going to put two pieces of tape on either side. I'll awesome. burp it. Um, and then I think I'll just let this grow until like the, the plant like is hitting the top and then I'll graduate it into this. That's perfect. Yeah. That's what I would do. We did it. Yeah, we did it. We, we freaking did it. I love it. This is great. <laughs> well, plant friends. Well, Peyton of Bloom Daddy. Thank you so much. Peyton has his own YouTube channel. He's linked below. Go check out his YouTube channel, especially if you're interested in what is the right damp step dampness of sphagnum moss he has a whole video on that um we are doing a giveaway on instagram for the next week peyton is giving away three philodendron pink princess nodes so you could try this yourself on instagram at bloom and grow radio go check it out he's giving the note uh the nodes and one free month uh access to the bloom and grow garden party check us out and go listen to the hour-long podcast episode where i grilled peyton on wet sticks what they are how they work and exactly how to go from cutting to having a lush plant um peyton thanks for joining us and i'll see you over at your youtube channel looking forward to it thank you so much and happy growing Okay, that was Peyton. Everything of his is linked below. Thank you, Peyton, for helping me. Thank you, Joey um, from Joey De La Plants on Instagram. He's also tagged below for gifting me my Monstera node. I'm so excited to see what happens next. I'm currently bottom watering um, the plant and then I'm gonna get it all set up under my grow light. Um, make sure that you join the giveaway. Get yourself a philodendron pink princess. Um, and I hope that this just helps you keep curious and of course, as always, keep blooming and keep growing. Oh, and one more thing. Um, I'll probably do another update, you know, in a few months to see what, what happens after this. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribed and leave a comment if you've tried this below. Okay, bye!